Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel. And welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, Everyday Generative AI with special guest Andy Morris, Enterprise AI Strategy Lead at Intel. Andy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Darren. Nice to be here. Hey, we've talked a couple times now. I love your insight into things. But today, instead of talking about all the great things that Intel is doing around AI, we're going to get to some, some brass tacks, some, hey, generative AI and AI in general is changing the way people do everything every day. You got some great insight on this. So let's dive in. But before we do that, I know my listeners want to know a little bit more about you. So tell tell us a little bit about um, Andy Morris, who he is and why we're talking to him today. Sure. Great. Let me give you a quick intro. So I guess I'm someone uh, who you would say is a technology geek who turned into a marketing geek. So I love taking great technology and, and bringing it to customers and making it work. And along the way, I learned how important it is to get the positioning right and really help the customers understand what the end value is uh, of the solution. So more recently, my career has been uh, primarily focused on AI, machine learning, and the huge breakthroughs that these technologies can bring to enterprises and individuals, as we'll, as we'll find out. So love love working in AI, everything around marketing, and I love working with partners collaborating to make a real difference for customers. So, so what got you interested in AI? Where, I mean, it's it's a fairly well, it's not new. It's been around a long time, but it's it's now starting to blossom. So, what got you interested in heading down the AI track? I think a couple of different things. I, uh, like a lot of people, especially people who work in technology, I've watched and read a lot of science fiction, right? As, as many of us have. So I was just fascinated by the, the future oriented view of what things like computer vision and natural language processing could bring. And because of the acceleration in developing those, those technologies, uh, some of these applications began to be you know, rolled out very quickly. And so I, I decided this was the definitive wave of technology for all of our futures that I wanted to be involved. So I, I, I know this is a big question. So, and we'll, we'll, we'll wax exoteric a little bit here. Are we just trying to make sci-fi real? Is that where technology is? Is we see, oh, that's a really cool idea. Let's make that happen. Or... You know what I mean? Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't think so uh, because I think you have kind of two branches of sci-fi. One is, hey, this is a great world of our future, and the other is, hey, look what could happen. Right? Oh, <laughs> There's a big right. history of Isaac Asimov of using sci-fi as kind of a fear-mongering uh, twilight zone of what could happen. So we're kind of keeping that branch to the side <laughs> and really looking at where the most impactful breakthroughs. Uh, could be used around use cases that help humanity most, uh, you know, healthcare, uh, uh, science, uh, you know, defense, actually, uh, you know, areas where we, you know, could use breakthroughs to uh, cut the time to, uh, uh, you know, make, making a difference. Uh, and a lot of that also is in the hard sciences, of course, right? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I always wondered if, if science follows art or art follows science, I guess. Uh, I'd say, I would say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about, I mean, it's been almost a year since Generative AI was launched with ChatGPT. It, it's been around, but I mean, yeah. launched. It's been almost a year. And we're seeing a plethora of new tools that are available. Um, where do I start? I mean, the, I, if I look at my uh, Facebook or Instagram reels or new, there's uh, hundreds of tools out there. That's right. But I mean, are they all doing the same thing? Uh, where do I start? Help me out, Andy. 
Well, there's some overlap. So I think the the most likely place that people are are going to be encountering generative AI um, is through the existing channels, and that's uh, one of them is search, right? So you know, Bing, Google, search, supercharged with uh, you know open AI technology, Bard, etc. Uh, that's where it's it, I, I think an easy place that people are going to start encountering. Now it's not an exact match as well, right? Because you know, you're looking for a plumber, you, you know, you don't always want to see a bunch of generative AI results. So it's going to really depend on the search intent. And then the other place is uh, applications in a particular uh, uh, chat GPT itself, right? So uh, that has experienced explosive growth. I think at one time, the the fastest adoption of any application in, in, in history. Now that, that uh, you know, Mountain has, has kind of started uh, dropping off in, in growth. Uh, but that's certainly one place where, where people are going to start uh, experiencing the uh, benefits of generative AI, and particularly with something like the plus subscription to, uh, uh, to ChatGPT, where you're, you know, they're rolling out uh, Dolly 3, which is uh, uh, generative AI image generation plugins, and it can now connect live uh, to the internet. Instead of being, you know, backward looking at two year old, uh, um, two year old you know, data. search history, right? So that that's a big one. And then there are a number of of other applications, and I've tested and looked at some of them, and uh, we can talk about some of those as well. Yeah, let, let's dig into that, and let's talk about these applications. And then you you think because we talked a little bit about this, you you think that everyday people are going to be using these tools. This is not just content creators or students, right? I, a great example, uh, my daughter called me last night. It's her, she's a freshman in college. And she's like, dad, uh, how do I use chat GPT without cheating? I don't want it to write my essay, but I want it to help me write a better essay. So I talked to her about that. So I know students are going to use it. Content yeah. creators are going to use it, but you think it will go beyond that. I, I I think so, um, and there, there's a big crossover audience there, right? Someone has uh, you know work they do at home, uh, you know a, a job, they may be able to to use uh, some generative AI technologies to help with their work for writing blog posts, for for adding images. Then they go home, maybe they're selling things on eBay on the side. Uh, you know they're also taking vacation photos, and some came out terribly, or they want to you know, pitch in and make it look like, hey, I didn't go to Philadelphia, I went to Hawaii, right? You know, sort of <laughs> kind of fun type things. Uh, so looking at that, there's uh, this one tool I think I could could talk about and uh, maybe make some people aware of that would, uh, uh, that they'd be able to start using right away. All right, let's dive in, let's dive into some of these tools that you found because this is where I think things get fascinating. Okay, well, so everybody knows the Adobe family of of products, and and it's large, and uh, you know people use Photoshop a lot. Uh, granted, it's turned into a very professional uh, oriented tool, um, and there are a lot of tools that people use to uh, add, edit, and and now even generate photographs from scratch let's say from text prompts or from other photos now adobe has done a great job here they have a new completely f free tool called adobe firefly uh and i've i've tested this out a bit there's some really interesting things they can do uh the first one that people have been using since generative ai apps have, have come out like mid journey and 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 dolly is text to image right so you type in a text uh you know, astronaut riding a horse on the moon. Fantastic. Here are five different ones. This is what I use for my news report or book cover. You have some different choices. Uh, people love it. It's fun. You can spend all day at it. I've spent half a day at it and then at a, you know, go find something to eat. But <laughs> that's, you know, one of the tricks in the, in the bag of tools in, uh, there'll be firefly. The other one is, is generative fill. So, uh, People may or may not know about this. Hey, this is uh, a great picture of me. 
I'm wearing my ugly yellow sweater. I want to turn it into my my pink uh, designer jacket, right? <laughs> so you can do that's a generative fill. Um, you have other things that are uh, kind of the flip side of that, which is out outfill, right? Here's a picture of me uh, with a tree in the background, but it's zoomed in. I want to see the whole background, and it'll go, you know, add a forest for you, right? So just really amazing uh, uh, technology that. Uh, going on behind the scenes and there's no cost at all to use it. Uh, so, because, so Adobe yeah. Firefly is generating new images. That That's right. It's generating new images and also generating or replacing portions of existing images. Oh, so it can, it can also do the generative fill as well. That's, exact, so that's exactly all, right. All of these things you talked about all fit into Firefly, a generative exactly fill, right. outfill and creating new things. Pretty incredible. How are we going to know what's, what's real and what's not. Uh, I, th I think that's a trick. Um, and the current tools are good enough that they, they are fooling experts. Uh, and the same also applies and it's even more complex in some cases with generative videos, right? And, and the, so uh, Intel, we have some, uh, we have a, a tool and I forgot the name of that actually has a fairly Fake good detector. ability to, you know, figure that out and, and at least assign a confidence ratio that this is original versus, uh, you know, generative or modified content, right? Uh -huh. So that's going to be become very popular, particular in things like politics. So you see that already of videos coming up of a politician and it may just be slightly modified, right? In, in a way that's very... Um, uh, Damning. What, that, that's exactly yeah. right. Uh, and you don't need to modify a video very much to tip the uh, uh, impression of what's going on, right? So, so what that tells me is when we see an image, we can't really necessarily believe them anymore. Um, I, I think we need to. I think we need to be more skeptical than than ever, uh, particularly because psychologists have found that as soon as you get that first impression it's much harder to go back and change it and say, oh, by the way, this is fake because you've already internalized your opinion based on the first contact with that, uh, you know, image or, or incorrect statement, right? So it's really important for people to look at anything that may seem, um, you know, polemical or out of the ordinary with a skeptical eye, no matter what side of uh, politics they're on, right? Because it's very easy to, to kind of wall yourself off. But I, I think anything now you need to say, you know, what, what's the provenance, right, of, of this? And so I, I think you're going to see some more things like, uh, you know, watermarking or maybe even using NFT technology, right, to be able to tie it back to the certified original copy of that piece of media. Oh, that, that's interesting. So NFTs may come back because <laughs> well, they were hot yeah, and NFT then they or, kind of crumbled. Or, uh, that was interesting. Or, well, or it's on the blockchain somehow, right? Yeah, so this yeah. this is a, the certified copy of video is recorded by Reuters at this, you know, this presidential or, or congressional speech, and, and that's it. And, and then it has a you know watermark or the it hasn't been modified. blockchain. So I, I think that's a use of, of that technology. All right. So an another quick thing with Adobe Flyer, Firefly, how do you see um, just normal people? using it um like everyday use type of things yeah like, where do you see that well you know the one i mentioned was was generative fill right so you know people love taking pictures everybody has a almost everybody at least has a camera uh camera slash cell phone in their pocket or purse uh it take pictures very few take perfect pictures so you want to dress them up uh beyond just you know, very simple effects you might be able to do on your phone with with adjusting the the, the filter or the uh, uh, let's say the the brightness or contrast. It takes it to the next level and gives the average consumer Photoshop and beyond like capabilities with no skill whatsoever. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Right. Because my one son, he is a Photoshop whiz. He. He put mm -hmm. our whole family photo with us in front of a erupting volcano. It was awesome. Yeah. Now yeah. I can do that. I don't need to ask him to do that anymore. Well, I can that's, use that's right. to in our, help our, me do that now. 
well, we're, well, welcome to another generation where, where kids are leapfrogging their uh, their parents. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, so Firefly is one. That's uh, text to image and gender to so manipulating images. What what about another tool? I'm going to talk about another one here, and th there are a class of of applications for this use case, and this is video generation, right? Okay. So Firefly is great for text generation, editing, uh, you know, the types of fill effects that we talked about. So, you know, what if what if you want to create a, a video from, let's say, a script you already have, or, or maybe just a blog on, on a web page? Maybe it's your page, it's somebody else's blog post. Uh, this, this tool is not completely free. It's about Netflix premium pricing to get the version that you'd, you'd want. It's called Video Gen. Video and, Gen. And, uh, okay. this is something that, that people could, uh, could, could look at and, uh, you know, take a look and see how it might be able to take an, an article that you have or a blog post. And these tools work in sort of the same ways that Video Gen does. They have, uh, an existing library of images and video clips that they'll insert based on what they think is going on at that point in your blog post or other other content right oh, so, so this is interesting because it's not actually generating new images or videos on the fly it's no it's aggregating things together to tell a story i love that that that's that's right and it, it's keyed on the implied theme of certain portions of your content right so that that's right. you know what we're going to do andy i'm going to go i'm going to go get video gen after i write the blog which will be generated by an in a, a generative ai after our conversation and then i'm going to have it do a video of our thing so if you're listening go find it on youtube you'll find it on embracing digital transformation we're going to do this we're going to see okay. how it does sounds I think great this be cool sounds great all right, so I can see lots of practical things I can do for that, right? Um, with VideoGen, can I feed it um, some of my own images um, to include in that? Does it allow me to do that? Um, do you know? That I'm, I'm not completely sure about. Um, I didn't get that far because it was just so easy for it to use, pull uh, clips from its own library. Uh, so that's, that's definitely something to, to look at we have to look there. Into there that, yeah. yeah. Because there are other tools that have for a long time been able to do that sort of create animated slideshows and things with different, you know, Ken Burns well, and other yeah, types of transitions. Yeah, Google does that. Google photos and that, Amazon exactly photos right. does that with my, my vacation trips, right? It creates right. a minute and a half clip of, you know, still images. Okay. And same thing with iPhoto, right? I see. Wow. Thank you. iPhoto, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The 1500 pictures I took on my trip to Romania are all boiled down to uh, a minute and a half uh, clip. And that's all my kids will want to watch anyway. That's they don't exactly. want to see all 1500 or, or, videos. Or your, your family's at, you know, at Thanksgiving and it's like, yeah, okay, exactly 90 right. seconds. Perfect. Okay. So video, video generation. I love this one. Uh, video gen. There's also video generators as well. Correct. Yes, there, there, there are, there are, um, there are a number of. They're not of, very good yet, though. They're they're yeah. not very good yet. It, it, they're either um, you can either have short or or good. I, I mean, it, it can be good <laughs> for very short clips, but, you know, really short. But just think how explosive the the uh, uh, technology has to be versus creating a single. Uh, still image uh, versus a, a video, right? That's because what it's doing is it's stringing together uh, images, right? To create, it doesn't have doesn't have the video already, right? So it just needs exponentially more content uh, to be able to create a create a video. That that will be becoming, I think, because well, and then there's also deep fake generation as well. This is where. Right, like you said, yeah. I can have a video where I change a little something. That's right. Or I can have, you know, um, a politician give an address to a bunch of um, kindergartners, 
um, or I can change what they say. We've seen that. We have um, seen a lot. We've seen people who we know look exactly like this person saying something they never said. And yeah. their voice is perfect too, right? Uh, so uh, the technology is here today and we're not smart enough to immediately uh, uh, recognize when it's fake. Yeah, that's it's, it's and like, that's where Intel's deep fake detection technology comes I in. I think right? so. That yes, that's right. That. All right, uh, very cool. All right, so we done we've done um, Adobe Firefly and and uh, image generation. We've done video gen. So what's next? Yeah, uh, here's another one. So uh, first of all, there's a, an excellent tool that's been out for a while called called Figma for people who want to do uh, you know graphics uh, online. Yeah, for many professional types of use cases. This, there's another one here for creating websites and it's excellent. It's really taking off. It's called Framer AI. It's basically at framer.com forward slash AI. So this is for generating and publishing your own website, complete website with AI in a very short amount of time. It can go from scratch. You can import something you've already done, let's say in HTML and it'll build upon that. So uh, it, it's fantastic, uh, you know, and I, I think it's going to give, uh, you know, some of the built in done for you uh, website makers. I, I won't mention them. There's a number of them on the market. I think it'll give them a run for their money because you don't have to choose a fixed template, which can be great. But then you look like everyone else's website. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right. Right. So it's a lot more uh, customizable. So I, I think this is going to fill a gap between these done for you website builders from templates and then having to go out and contract a whole agency to do it in you know joomla or, or wordpress or something so I, I think it's really great in fact it's growing big enough that they're now people are consulting who just use this tool and the client never knows but they're able to do a project in a, in a third the time in a short period of time that's right Well, so that brings up an interesting question. Um, there is, and, and can generative AI replace like designers? These people understand design elements, color, placement. They understand the, the laws of one third and all those things. Can generative AI completely replace those? Or are we still going to need humans to say that actually still looks pleasant? That's still attracts people to to my website types of things. Do you know where I'm going with that, Andy? Yeah, I, I would say where the technology is now, you're able to replace the least skilled 20% of, of the market in a lot of different applications, translation, uh, generative AI. So it, it's already, I think it's that good. Um, and, and obviously it'll start creeping up Right. But for now, I'd put it in the 20 percent category. OK. Uh, but beyond that, you're still going to need uh, likely some expertise to get the full finished uh, uh, outcome for, for you know, sophisticated applications, websites. You know, obviously, you can write a good blog post already and, you know, maybe already good enough. And you put your own links in afterwards. Right. So it's gotten very good at, at so, things so that we, we thought. Really, were, yeah. 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 This has really lowered the bar of entry for people that want to maybe start a business. Or, yeah, I, I or think have so. an online presence for something. This really lowers the bar a lot. Yeah, I, I think so. I think it opens up the market for a lot more. Uh, you may have heard the term solopreneurs. Right. Hey, I want to do this. I want to build this this SaaS app. Well, I can already do some, you know, a large part of the code generation uh, to get it started. Then I need help with the with the finishing touches. Then I need a website. Well, listen, I can do this. I've got it started. Then I need some help. Uh, you know, these logos are really basic. Maybe I need a professional who's really experienced in logo design. You know, give me eight different options, and I'll pick the best one. Wow, I mean, that's 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 pretty cool. Okay, so we got Figma X Framer uh, Framer AI. I I, li I like this. In fact, I may go I may go touch on that to see if it can improve my embracingdigital.org website. Which, when you look at it, if you people are listening, go look at it. You're going to say, "Oh yeah, an engineer did that website." 
<laughs> guaranteed. So um, I, I may I may spruce it up just a touch, see what I could do. So that that could be interesting. All right, what what else do you have for me? That's that's three. You mentioned you got five different ideas. Yeah, well, I have an alternative um, generative AI image app here. Uh, well, it, it's called uh, Clip Drop. So that, that's another one to, okay. to, to look at. And this does some, the first thing it does is some pretty basic, basic things. And this comes into, um, uh, to play often. I have this great image. Let's say it's a headshot and there's a background, but I want to use just this image. And so you want, in Photoshop, you do something called take a magic lasso tool, right? And remove the uh, background. Yeah convert into a PNG. So this does that all for you uh, very well, better than an individual would be able to do trying to follow it, an outline, right? Uh, so it, it does the, uh, um, you know, background vanishing. Uh, it can do some other types of things uh, that disappear in, in, in background. So think of it really as being strong in background removal. Uh, and other types of things like uh, enhancements, uh, maybe the capabilities you'd find on your consumer photo editing app, but a level beyond. Okay. All right. So, yeah. this, so is, uh, this is a direct competitor with Adobe Firefly. Yeah. I, 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 really I think targeted so. Really background removal and yeah, enhancement. A, a, little, a little less less polished. Because the Adobe, everything the Adobe comes out with is just, you know, they have such a high. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I would look at the Firefly first. Okay. All right. Very cool. All right. Last last tool of the day. Here's Let's another one. Everybody either loves or hates spreadsheets, but we have to use them, right? <laughs> yes, we uh, do. <laughs> so this is a, a really fantastic one, and I, I've used other tools that you could, you could say are the, from the pre-Gen AI uh, generation. Everyone knows Excel, uh, even Smartsheet, which, which is excellent in its own way, particularly for collaborating with, with spreadsheets. So here's here's a, a really great one I've been playing around with, and it's called Rhodes. And it's a great domain name that must have cost him a fortune, Rhodes.com. Uh, so R-O-A-D-S? Uh, R-O-W-S. Oh, Rose, Rose, Rose. Oh, that's right, like Rose and yeah, yeah. That would have cost them an arm and a leg. To get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's first of all a very uh, simple way for uh, doing anything with uh, a spreadsheet, which which we all have to one time or another. But it also has uh, a couple of different things that I think really make it stand out. One is the number of data sources that are supported. So it it's, uh, stands out, and the use case categories are the ones you would expect for a spreadsheet. So sales, marketing, um, any kind of analytics, financial tracking. Uh, but all of us have e external data sources, and many of these are, are public data sources as well. Uh, LinkedIn, you know, tweet or X, you know, statistics, Google Docs. So you can just basically connect all of those into rows and, and then it, it, it will use some of its AI, you know, AI magic, quote unquote, to, to help start building a more sophisticated worksheet for you and showing you uh, uh, insights. So definitely one that you uh, oh. would immediately start trying to plug in with data you already have and say, wait a minute, you know, do I need to really create my, my own, uh, uh, you know, formulas in, in spreadsheet. What formula do I use here anyway? And, and maybe I, I, I need some, uh, you know, conditional highlighting because I want to see the top 20% of my customers. Uh, uh, so it can kind of do things like that auto automatically. What you're describing is data fusion driven by generative AI on the back end. So like you said, I could have really complex data sources coming in. It's going to say, um, for example, here's something super complex. 
I'm trying to coordinate all 22 members of my family because I have 10 kids and they've gotten married and I've got grandkids now. So there's 22 of us and we're all going on vacation together, all flying from different parts of the United States, all arriving in, in this location at a certain time. I've got to get rental cars and, and accommodations for everyone. That's my job. Do you know how much of a nightmare that has been to coordinate? <laughs> I can so imagine. with roads, I could just feed in, here are the flight numbers. It's going to know, it, it can go out and get that information and build me a spreadsheet that does this automatically for me. I've spent I, hours. I, I think so. I think you could even get, let's say, a Twitter feed from, from the airlines. Uh, yeah, if know, there were delays the, or anything like that. Yeah, feed feed that in. And, and also, it, it looks like it has a... a plug into a, a Zapier or Zapier. And if you've used that tool, which is, uh, you know, kind of a trigger based workflow. Yeah. Uh, I the, use Zapier. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, exactly. So imagine combining that. So I, I think there is going to be, uh, you know, kind of an, an army of, uh, of consultants <laughs> that also, first of all, it's easy, but then people who are really good at that are going to be able to create these amazing, you know, automated dashboards. Right. Very, very cool. So this is interesting because what you mentioned it a couple of times, people that learn how to use these tools are going to have an advantage. That That's right. And, and power users in particular are going to be very uh, coveted for some of the top tools. So you're seeing that already around things like Figma and, and Notion, which you may have seen, uh, you know, people are building custom uh, notion templates and and just that alone is turning into like a, a fantastic sideline and consulting business so I, I think something like rose again um uh, everybody or every business and almost every person in the business needs some sort of dashboard um and, and a lot of them are are clunky hard to put together un, unreliable uh there's no end to the the use cases for something like uh like this um, so I, I'm, I'm right in telling my kids because some of my kids are already in the workforce. Some are in college and I got two high schoolers. I told them, you better hop on this bandwagon. You better learn how to use generative AI tools to get your work done, because if not, you're going to be left in the dust. And that sounds like that's true. Yeah. And those are quote I saw and I have no idea who to attribute this to. And it's essentially said. AI is not going to take your job someone who is an expert with AI will, right? So you, All know, right. you, would... you guys heard it today from Andy <laughs> Morris. Since we don't know who originally said it, we're going to attribute it to Andy. Um, AI is not going to take your job, but an expert in using AI will. I, I love that. Yeah. I think now is the time to be uh, an expert or, or gain power user capabilities with the latest, latest tools. Great. A Andy, thank you for coming on the show. This has been great because we got to some real practical stuff. A lot of times on my show, we, we talk esoteric. We're like, well, lift this. And now we got down to some real like Firefly, Video Gen, no, you mentioned Notion, uh, Figma, Framer, IO, Clip, Clip Drop, and uh, Rose. These all sound like great um, tools. Some of them I've never heard of. I'm absolutely going to go go get some some things. I promise I'll do the video gin. I have that on my list. That gives me something to play around with this weekend because I got all the time in the world, obviously, right? So well, sounds <laughs> great. I'll, I'll be looking forward to seeing the result. Hey, thanks, Andy, again for coming on the show. I look forward to having you back on. Um, I love it. This has been great. Okay, likewise. Thanks, thanks Darren. Thank you for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you enjoyed our podcast, give it five stars on your favorite podcasting site or YouTube channel. You can find out more information about Embracing Digital Transformation at embracingdigital.org. Until next time, go out and do something wonderful.